excited to have a Leadership Live series specifically focused for our newest Buccaneers. You all are super special to us, and I know it's been interesting not being able to get together and spend the spring together with some of our longtime traditions like Big Saturday and everything. So we wanted to dedicate this Leadership Live specifically for you, give you a chance to kind of get to know the community, learn kind of how uh, we're thinking about these kind of challenging times and most importantly, how you can connect with our community um, now and then also in the future. So as everybody is kind of joining in, um, please let us know that you're here with us and let us know your division or grade level, student's name or your name, whatever you're comfortable with. This is Conversations with Country Day. Although it looks a little different than normal, we wanna, we wanna say hello, a virtual hello. We also have the marketing communications team on chat as well. So they wanna say um, hello to you as well. So today we have Mark Reed, our head of school, and Nancy Ehringhouse, who you all know very well, Director of Admissions and Financial Aid. Hi, guys. Um, we, as usual, as normal, we would have a new parent reception that Mr. Reed would be would have hosted in his home. So he really felt um, it was really important for him to welcome you uh, to the school community. And we are later joined by Scott Stevens, our board chair, and Nancy Saz, an alumna of the school and our incoming prayer parent association president so they'll be kind of popping up onto the screen and talking to you as well the format that we use um, for this leadership live platform only allows for four of us to be on at a time so i'm just going to kind of be bringing people in and out as we're kind of having conversations and i'm gonna as i ask questions and if you have any questions for either mark nancy nancy Saz, or scott stevens just chat put it in the chat and i will um you know i'll kind of coordinate that as we go so we're going to kind of pop in and go into introductions again like i said earlier as you're logging on please let us know where he, you're here i see brian french we've got a new fifth grader so hi welcome thanks for popping in if anybody else wants to say hello um, oh yeah we said we have savonda willis hi so hi. let us know you're here um and you guys are now a community together so say hello to each other um, <laughs> So I want to do introductions. Our first guest, Nancy Ehringhouse, as you know, our Director of Admissions and Financial Aid, and I know you know her very well, and her legacy at Country Day is truly extraordinary. In her nearly 40 years at Country Day, she has not only led thousands of students and families through the admissions journey, but she has continued on as a guide and a mentor and watched these kids walk the stage and celebrated all of their successes as they head off to their next step into colleges and universities. Nancy, your heart for students in this school is remarkable and Country Day truly is who we are today because of the impact that you've had. So just thank you on behalf of myself, my team, and the entire Country Day community. Um, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of give a little introduction yourself. And I thought what it was interesting 40 years, and you've corrected me nearly 40 years. Yeah. Not quite. What was it like to work at an uh, institution for 40 years, you know, have your children grow up here and watch as the school and city has grown? Yeah. Well, well thank, you. thank you, Shannon, so much um, for that nice introduction. It has just been such a great joy to be at Country Day for this many years. And I do want to quickly just give a nice shout out for my amazing team. Um, Robin Riggins and Cheryl Miller, Molly Phillips, Jabari Spruill, our whole team is here with me, even though we're not, to welcome all of the new families. And um, it's just been, but my career at Country Day, as, I, as Shannon said, began close to 40 years ago, and I joined as a lower school teacher. And I thought, I'll try this out and see what I think. And, you know, one of the things that really brought me and kept me at Country Day was a simple welcome that I had from, um, I had a room parent, Tilly Tice, and Tilly welcomed me, helped me learn the ropes at Country Day. Her daughter was in my class. 
and truly that set the stage um, for just what it feels like to be new and what a difference it can make when people in the community reach out and touch you, whether it's physically or whether it's through Zoom or whatever we're doing these days. But that communication makes such a difference. I felt it also from the amazing faculty. When I came here, I thought, my goodness, this, these professionals, they are unbelievable. Their expertise, their enthusiasm, their level of professionalism was really what I've been longing for in my career. Um, and not to mention the darling, smart, precious children that I got to work with every day. That was that was the icing on the cake, of course. Um, yes, Shannon, my both my girls went to Country Day. They were lifers. They started in JK, went all the way through 12th grade. A lot of the very things that they are passionate about today, they learned right here at Country Day. We, um, one of my daughters is a singer and she, in 10th grade, she sang a solo um, under Gary Forbes, a teacher who's just retiring after 40 years. And she got up there and belted out this song. And I, I remember I looked at my husband and I said, did you know she could sing? Aww. And he said, uh, not like that. Mm -hmm. Well, those are those kinds of passions. Being on teams, they both learned what it means to win and lose. They both learned, you know, to be a leader, but also to be a follower. That that takes, you know, it's pretty important to be a follower and, and to do. And so I think that those kinds of things that I learned as a parent here, as a professional, yes, but as a parent too. So I hope for each of you as new families that you will get to experience, and I know you will get to experience all that. Um, there have been a lot of changes at Country Day. I mean, goodness me, when I came um, in the early 80s, it was, um, it was the, we weren't that much smaller. We were about 1,500 students. Um, now we're close to 1,700 students, so it wasn't hugely smaller, but the city has grown so much. So much about education has grown. What we know about the brain, brain research, all those kinds of things have really changed how we deliver what we deliver. Um, but I think one of the things that I love the best about Country Day, and I hope for each of you as new families, you will you will really begin to appreciate and love is just the attention to detail, the care for the individual child, some of the wonderful traditions that we have that will continue, but how we are always progressive in what we deliver. We're going to look at what's the best for each child and be sure that we provide that. So I, I think that as new families, I just hope that you, as you're getting all this information from us, you are thinking, we are thinking about your child. We're thinking about almost 1,700 children, but we're thinking about your child. So that's something that's very, very important. Um, I don't think I'm going to be here another 40 years, but who knows? <laughs> so with that, I'll turn it back to you, Shannon. Ah, thank you, Nancy. Yeah, it's truly humbling seeing, you know, the, the retiring faculty and just kind yes. of the tenure. It definitely said something about this place that people, once you're in, you're in. This community yeah. is tight. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you. So as I said, we're joined by Mark Reed, our head of school. He's in his 11th year or ended up his 11th year leading Country Day. And it's truly been humbling to watch his unshakable focus on students in all of his work, truly keeping mission and affirmation center. Mark, you know, I always kind of want to stop and say thank you for your leadership and kind of leading the way and keeping the school where they need to be focused centered on uh, centered on students and um, where focus on our mission. And before I kind of pass it along and introduce our guests, Nancy and Scott, I wanted to give you an opportunity to share a little bit about why, how these Leadership Live series came to be. This was your brainchild. This is maybe our seventh or something like that. Um, just give us a little <laughs> sense of that and what you hope they have and will accomplish. Thank you, Shannon. And, and first and foremost, uh, it's, a, it's a big hearty welcome to each and every one of you. Uh, I can't help, and, and this kind of reveals my, my weakness are students. I mean, I am a student-centered head of school, and to see students um, who've logged on, Ella, you're going into ninth grade. I can't wait to meet you and get to know you and your passions at school. Uh, to see all these rising K's and all the names of these of these students that I'm going to meet excites me. And quite frankly, it takes me away from 
the coronavirus challenges, from the, the social uh, challenges we're dealing with right now, um, for this little respite of time, it's really wonderful to see so many families logging on and their children's names up here. It just gets me excited and makes me think about school and education. Uh, so a big welcome there. And, and the idea behind Leadership Live was really about how do we communicate with our families that we've developed these partnerships with. Um, you know, you'll hear me say, maybe to ad nauseum <laughs> here, but you will hear me say time and time again how important the parent-school partnership is in really maximizing our abilities to work with your children. And uh, I believe deeply in that. And the Leadership Live is truly an extension of that. We do parent education at this school probably to the, to the next level, if you will. We have parent education that involves New York Times bestselling authors. For large gatherings, we do parent education by division. For small gatherings, all topics that we think are interesting and topical to how we can best serve your child and meet the mission of our school. Um, first and foremost, um, you will hear lots and lots of schools talk about mission statements. Well, this community is a community that believes deeply in the mission statement, but we also believe deeply in our affirmation of community. Um, both of those things attracted me to the school 11 years ago. Uh, this is my 31st year in education, and uh, it took a lot to have me leave a school that I'd served for 20 years, but this school did it by both my visit and meeting the people that are a part of this play and the passion they have for it and uh and in the, in the affirmation of community and so arriving here to an unbelievable welcome and so far i hope every single one of you has truly been welcomed but you will find out that that welcome doesn't end um i for a while there i thought maybe it's just me i'm the head of school People have to be nice to me in their own mind. They don't really have to be, but they think they have to be nice to me. But I watch family after family, year after year, student after student, feel welcomed the entire time they're here. Not just when they first arrive and then you're forgotten about. You will be known, as I promised, you will be known, you'll be loved, your child will be challenged, and your child will be inspired. And my ninth grader, Ella, that, that's speaking to you specifically. So um, all of you, all of you will experience an incredible opportunity here. Uh, but the Leadership Live was one more way to stay connected to parents. When we hit this wall uh, with a pandemic, the first thing we thought about is how do you maintain community? How do you maintain the partnership that's so strong that maximizes opportunity for kids. And th this was it. This was one way. We communicate very regularly. You're probably starting to see all of that this spring, but um, that is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, you are a partner with us in educating your child. And this is just an expression of that. Oh, well, thanks, Mark. Yeah, it's been um, it's been fun and a learning curve, kind of doing all these live events and connecting with community in this new way. So again, thank you all of you new families that are coming on and letting us know that you're here. Um, in case you missed in the beginning, um, I'm going to be asking some questions of our guests throughout it. But if there's a specific topic or question that you're interested in hearing about, please let us know by chatting in the comments kind of throughout and I will bring those questions in kind of at the end or when it when it's appropriate. So um, again, thank you, Mark and Nancy. I'm going to now pull you off the screen. And I'm going to bring Scott and Nancy says on. Right. All right. Here we are. Thank you. Hi, Scott. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> Welcome to the conversation. Um, I am going to start out by introducing Scott Stevens, our current chair of the Board of Trustees. While Scott's in his first year as chair, this is uh, he's ten, been a family parent at Country Day for 10 years and five years, I believe, on the board. Scott serves on several other nonprofit boards around the area and is a leader in the financial industry. Scott also let me ex extend my my thanks to you and 
the entire board for your support throughout kind of for the school, but especially during these challenging times, standing on that foundation is super, um, is amazing to have. So thank you so much. Um, and before we, I introduce Nancy, I wanted you to um, be, have a chance to share kind of the role of a board at an independent school, what the board does, what the board of trustees is at Country Day, and personally, why you're so deeply involved in the school. Yeah, sure. Uh, great to meet everybody virtually. Um, nice to join you here from, um, you know, my home office, also known as the um, spare bedroom. Uh, as, as we're all figuring out how to work uh, remotely, uh, I look forward to meeting many of you uh, next year. Um, you know, the uh, sort of answering those in reverse order, uh, Shannon, you know, uh, being part of the board most of the time is a lot of fun. And um, it's an honor to be part of, you know, organization and school, which which is in its 77th or 78th year. Um, and that's a long period of, of growth and excellence at Charlotte Country Day School. And so to be part of that um, is an honor and a privilege. And to get to work with uh, folks like Mark and folks like Nancy and, and the just true dedicated professionals that we have at Country Day, uh, I'm not just saying it because I'm supposed to say it, um, it, I, I genuinely enjoy it. Um, I find it intellectually stimulating to to interact with people like that. Um, and it, and again, it's uh, it's a treat. And and most of the time, it's it's a ton of fun. Sometimes when you have uh, to, to make decisions about communications around closing school, well, that's and going remote. Those are not those are serious things that aren't as much fun. Um, and, um, you know, the role of the board is, you know, for any nonprofit is to think about the, the long term health of the organization. Um, and that's what Country Day's board does. Um, you know, my, my children, when I went on the board, occasionally wondered, you know, what that meant for them. And I explained to them, that's bad for you, because that means as a board member, I can, you know, I can't say anything. You know, I, my, I, my duty is now to the school. A board's duty is to the school and to the head and to the administration. Um, and we can't be uh, self-interested. And so you, my children, are on your own. Uh, <laughs> and you're just going to have to keep your noses clean and, and do the right thing. And fortunately, they generally do. Um, you know, but, but our job is to think long term. Uh, our job is to ensure the financial stability of the school. Our job is to make sure that we have a, a head and an administration that keeps students first and education first. But our job is not to get into um, how how the educate education is crafted, because we're not experts in that. Um, about you know about the only time that they put us to use for what we're actually trained in is in either financial management, um, you know, because many of us have financial backgrounds or in raising money. Um, but other than that, the board really needs to uh, be mentors to uh, the, the, the head and the administration and supportive and loyal uh, and really try to keep the long-term health of the, of the school front of mind. Uh, and that's what we try to do. Wow. Well, thanks for sharing that perspective, Scott, and um, kind of seeing the the strength of the school. Like you said, almost 80 years. I think we've been blessed with uh, many strong boards, and we're super grateful to have you leading the helm. Um, before I introduce Nancy, I wanted to let all the viewers know that just next, um, where we will have a conversation about kind of our planning around next year, as well as the community ways for you to connect with community, just so you have a sense of the topics that we're gonna to get to next. Um, and now I will introduce last, but certainly not least, Nancy Saz. Um, she is our incoming president of the Parents Association. Nancy and her husband have three children, Sally, class of 2017, Patsy, a new graduate 2020, and Lulu, a rising junior. 
While the Saz family has been part of the Country Day community for 17 years, Nancy herself is has been a Buccaneer for well longer as a graduate of Country Day. From classroom parent, boosters, among um, a lot of other roles, um, they have really made an impact at Country Day as kind of volunteers and community members throughout the years. So Nancy, thank you so much for all that you have done for the school from an alumni perspective, as well as a parent perspective. It's really amazing and humbling to see. Um, and it was also great to see you and Patsy from Socially Distant Safe Place a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and she yeah. got her diploma. Congratulations, that's really awesome. How does it feel to have two alumni now? Well, it's good. Welcome everyone. Thank you for letting me join. And um, you're joining a great team, a great community. Um, and we're very excited to have you and um, look forward to meeting in person. Um, having alumni, I, as an alumni, I can say I have been obviously a part of this community for a very long time and have seen it develop and grow in lots of unique ways. And you're really joining an influential and um, passionate group of teachers, administrators, families. And um, as a former student, I could reel off all of my teachers from, from kindergarten through 12th grade. And something I learned in every single class, something special that they shared with me um, has stuck with me. And um, likewise, I can say that I'm equally um, completely amazed at how my own girls have grown and evolved and into these passionate young women. Um, I have three, my, my children are all girls. So passionate young women um, from their experiences at Country Day. My, my oldest, who is the rising senior in college, used to cry um, when we would sing happy birthday to her. She hated being the center of attention. But I, I sincerely believe that Country Day instilled um, a confidence in her by putting her on the stage in the lower school plays, by encouraging her to um, be a buddy to a new student by encouraging her and teaching her how to engage adults in conversations, both in the classroom and out of the classroom, by getting her to join clubs, try out for teams, run for office. Um, sometimes successful, sometimes not. Regardless, um, there were growth moments. And mm -hmm. being a risk taker is a fundamental part of growing. And um, Country Day does an amazing job of encouraging us all, not just students, but families to reach out and grow. Um, I can honestly say when I've dropped my girls off for college or any program, I, I feel confident that they have the tools that they need to make friends, to succeed academically, and just to, to make the most of every day. And it's Country Day has been transformative for my girls and our whole family as um, the opportunities to learn as a parent and as a student, as a member of the school community, are, are bountiful. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, your girls are truly amazing. It's been fun kind of getting to know the older ones and we're all looking forward to hearing, you know, all they're, they're gonna do and the impact that they're, they're gonna make in the world. Um, you know, especially, you know, I have to um, congratulate and mention your oldest being a Moorhead Kane scholar. Um, obviously, Country Day, you know, we're proud of her as an alumni and a product, but um, the Saz family, you guys are amazing, amazing family and great parents. So just congratulations on all of that success and the rising senior and an upcoming graduate. So congratulations and thank you. Um, I will now, we are going to transition to talking about kind of the planning. Um, so I'm going to kind of say, see you in a little bit Scott and Nancy and oh actually Scott you're gonna stay here and I'm gonna bring Mark in so Nancy I'll see you in a little bit thanks again all right here we are hi welcome back Mark thank you <laughs> um, and like I said, I know top on everybody's mind is kind of what Country Day is, how we're thinking about 
I, this virus, how it's going to impact um, our school, not only this past spring, but also moving forward. Um, I know that we have been thinking about, you know, with these stay at home orders and kind of watching the news. So this is the time that we're going to be able to have that conversation. Um, Scott, I kind of wanted to start off with you from a board perspective. What was important about the decision making? You mentioned it earlier that that was one of the harder kind of moments as a board member to make the decision decision to, you know, what, how to communicate and make the decision to go remote and go off campus, but kind of what was important in that and what is the thinking big picture as the school looks ahead? Yeah, I think we wrestled with three big things and one, you know, yeah. was how would we communicate it? Uh, you know, because the, the biggest thing, a, a, a really big thing in this is you've got, uh, you know, 1,700 students, um, you know, thousands of people affected and trying to communicate in a transparent way as to what you know and what you don't know in a period of uncertainty. Getting that balance right isn't easy and um, it's really handled by the administration, but as a board, you know, we need to be mindful that we're upholding our end of the bargain. So communication was a big piece of it. Knowing that um, remote learning would work, something we'd never done. You've got um, a wonderful faculty, all of whom were highly trained to educate uh, your children in the classroom and not, uh, not remotely, but um, they're, they're professionals and, and game to, to figure it out. And um, you know, I was blown away with how uh, you know, the team really uh, you know, stepped up to the challenge, uh, looked at other schools that had already gone through it to learn best practices. Um, but but ensuring that we had a plan for remote learning was important. And then, um, you know, the, the biggest kind of just jump off the cliff together decision was, well, is now the right, is now the right time to do it? Um, and, you know, in retrospect, it's a fairly obvious decision. But at the time, it was not obvious. Uh, you know, even the CDC had not come out with clear guidance. And you heard my, you know, we had a pandemic plan. Well, it was heavily influenced by what the CDC would, would be recommending. And they were somewhat catching up. They were in a catching up mode because everybody was a little bit caught off guard. And so uh, we were having to make decisions based on the best judgment that we had and um, and watching constantly what others were doing, as you can imagine. Um, so, you know, just, uh, and our job is to ask good questions and, and to make sure um, we're helping spot issues for Mark and the team. Um, and so ultimately it, 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 it worked fine, but, but those were the three things that we really honed in on. Thanks, Scott. And Mark, uh, like I said in the beginning, you are a student first leader, always putting students first in all the decision making. You know, can you share a little bit of how that influenced the decisions that you've made so far and in the planning? Sure. Th thank you, Shannon. And, and thank you, for, Scott, for, for really kind of conveying the process we went through. Um, we uh, have always put students first, and, and that was one of the things that attracted me to the school. One of the things is, that keeps me at the school is we put students first in everything we do. And that student well-being was at the top of the list when we thought about how do we do this? How do we, how do we serve the mission of our school and serve it well when we are not in a position to be together? Um, you may have noticed that there were schools who took uh, an extra week of spring break, who took extra time, 10 days extra to, to, um, to really plan. Uh, I am so proud of this leadership team and so proud of our faculty and staff because when the situation arose, they leaned in and said, what do we need to do? How can we do it? How can we get trained? And we really moved forward with this emergency remote learning in a way that made me, um, number one, very proud, and number two, allowed us to get feedback from parents in a constant improvement mode. And, and what you'll find about me in the years to come as we work together to, to serve your child 
is that I am a, a believer, a big, big believer in constant improvement. I'm always trying to figure out how we can do things better, even things that go great. I'm trying to figure out how we can do them better. And I think that is the ethos of this school and of our faculty and staff. And, and it shows in everything pro from professional development to situations like this, where faculty and staff just say, how do we step up? How can we do this? Um, to, to give you a small example, the end of the first week of remote learning, I had more emails from parents saying, you won't believe this teacher socially distanced and brought this book over, or this teacher got all the scholastic magazines that were supposed to come in for the next week's lessons and she delivered them to homes and, and or somebody was on Skype with my child and I was with them and it was an incredible experience watching a teacher do their job. Um, I think one of the, you know, I always try to say in every great challenge, there's great opportunity. And I think one of the opportunities that's come from this is parents, I, I truly believe have a newfound respect for educators. Um, you got to see firsthand the kind of challenges that it takes to educate children on a daily basis with your own children. And then you add, you know, 15 or 16 more students to, to a class and, and one instructor or two instructors. And, uh, and it really does give you a sense of, of what it's like. Uh, this process is always going to be student run, at student first. Uh, we've done that with with every situation that's come up in the school, and this was no different. So our mindset was the same. The challenge was different. Yeah. Um, how did we stay connected? You know, we, we put students first, um, and we made sure that that education was still as high quality as the standards that Country Day sets. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, goal, the goal ultimately is the same as it is in everything else we do at the school, which is to do it better the next day than you did it the day before. So you should have seen improvements in the education that was being delivered mm -hmm. every day, every week for for the entire time you were you were experiencing this. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for kind of sharing that about kind of how we where we focus in on our decision. And as we're looking forward, um, you know, there's been some conversations and questions about the various scenarios. Um, the new families did receive your email relevant sure. to kind of how we're thinking about. Um, but can you share from a school perspective our philosophy on remote learning moving forward and a little bit about how we're thinking about the um, decisions, what next year could look like? Sure. I, I will tell you first and foremost, and Scott mentioned that we, we, these educators, including myself, when I taught economics, if somebody had said to me, you're going to be teaching that remotely now, I would be thinking, okay, how could I bring four generations of cell phones in and teach kids about depreciation in the upper school? You know, they're just tools you really, you really are used to this face to face and you believe it's the, the most effective way to educate. Well, uh, that was clearly shaken up and we had to learn this emergency remote learning. Well, the more time we've had, the better we've gotten at it and the better we'll continue to get at it. And so if there happened to be another iteration of that, it would be a new and improved version um, and more effective version of remote learning. No matter how well it went, we're always trying to get better. Uh, our first and, and, and uh, kind of primary focus right now is how do we get all of our students back to campus? Okay. How do we get all of our students here learning face to face with our teachers? And that's our primary goal. We have planning around that that's taking place right now on our emergency planning team. And we also have three other scenarios that we're looking at. One, that is, you know, a model where students would be here at a certain uh, certain days of the week based on based on social distancing and current and, and the current federal and state policies at the time. We're mm -hmm. looking at a version of blended learning, and we're also looking at remote learning. Planning for all of them okay. so that we can be prepared to do everything when the time comes. Absolutely. And can you share kind of how the communication is going to go? Like, how are these families going to hear about that, um, you know, kind of in the summer? So we'll con we're continuing to work on that. We'll present to the board. We've got our board of trustees uh, meeting coming up in the, towards the end of June, and then we'll report back to the community uh, on the direction we're going based on the information we have. Okay. Uh, 
I would tell you school could well be back. Um, and my hope is that we're all back on the same campus. Absolutely, it could be different than it has been uh, in the past. It could be that we have personal protective equipment. We could have masks and things like that. And those are the, those are the kinds of things that we're continuing to look at. Uh, we wanna mitigate risk. And at the same time, we want the actual education to be the highest quality we can offer and face-to-face is where we believe that that happens best. Yeah, absolutely. And for everybody kind of tuning in, I also want to let you know BucksNet is a great resource. I know we send a lot of communication and especially during these times, we're going to be kind of more over communicating because we want to make sure you're feeling connected and you know what's going on. But if you miss an email or if you don't know or if you have a question, BucksNet is the place to go. There is right on the top, four big buttons, very focused on these kind of topics that we know are front of mind. So there's a button about kind of planning for next school year so you know just know that you can we're going to be constantly updating that that's a that's a place to go um yeah there's a quick question about kind of how you prep kids for the new school in in these conditions i think helping kids connect with others even virtually helps to start establish relation establishing relationships so if you can connect with other students in the grade and i know nancy does a great job of putting uh of putting together new parents and and uh, old parents and that's a great way to start to get kids connected uh, my daughter you know has done virtual lunches with her with her friends um, and it actually while it seems a little funny but you think about lunch and think about how lunch was a seminal experience for you in school. Um, well, they decided to have their lunches together virtually mm-hmm. uh, via Zoom or via Microsoft Teams. Um, and it's still that same conversation that they're having, but they're eating by themselves. If we can connect kids that way, um, we would. I, I think it's a great start and we would be more than willing to help make that happen. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Mark. I know Nancy Aaron has has been really focused on this. um, So I know she's going to kind of talk on this as well. Um, So again, the last thing I wanted to say is Mark mentioned briefly about kind of the amazing work that our faculty and staff did kind of pivoting to this um and sometimes it's hard to understand or especially for our newest jkk what does that really look like there is so there are so many examples on BucksNet to give you a sense of how we try to create community handle extracurricular um as well as the academics um it's a place to start so again um pop into BucksNet and there's a big button if you have any questions and i'm more than happy to send you in the right direction um all right thank you so much scott and mark i'm gonna kind of now i'm gonna bring back nancy the nancy's <laughs> and if anybody has any questions just feel free to continue to um ask in that chat place here we go all right here we go hi welcome back (laughs) Uh, thanks for being patient as we're kind of working with the with the stream um as you saw you know we quickly pivoted to the community um i know you know that is a topic that you guys really want to talk about and the conversation's changing a little bit um than it has been in other years um as we want to make sure first and foremost that our we're mitigating risk and we're making sure that we're doing everything in our power um to keep our community safe so um nancy i wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about the role of the parent association um the history and the amazing work that the pa does uh, to develop and foster community is pretty incredible and as you love to lead the parent association next year we want to share with our families you know ways that they can can get connected um, with the pa and kind of without okay thank you yes i um when our family first joined country day i think i was primarily focused on the students it was all about students and young people and learning but country day is really all about your entire family it is it's a community where everyone can grow and um i would encourage you to to all come bring your entire family to events um not only that your class sponsors but bring to all school events um whether it's athletics a soccer game a field hockey game 
the middle school musical. Um, we have a, the Parents Association sponsors a what is called the Run for Good. It's a charity run um, where the young folks run around the track, and then we have a family picnic with food trucks. Um, all of these, a holiday breakfast, big Saturday, of course, you've probably heard of, but all of these opportunities enable you and give you opportunities to connect um, with members of this school community, the teachers and other families. And this is what makes the experience rich for all of us. Um, it, it enables us to meet people that we might not cross paths with otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, the Parents Association sponsors and supports hundreds of these events. Um, and there are opportunities to connect by being a volunteer or just as a participant. Um, some of those range from opening carpool doors for the lower school students when they arrive for school, um, helping reshelve books in the library, to coming to the, we have a wonderful parent education um, series, some, some of them for the all school, um, where we invite special speakers in from various parts of the country. Some are um, more geared towards specific country day events. Parenting experts come in. Um, they're, they're Manaboo's a big Saturday. That's a great way to make a new friend or a contact. Um, enjoying the big Saturday, we have an international tent that is sponsored by our international families and it's fabulous because you get to talk to them about their special dishes, make a new friend and then take your dish to go watch the talent show and which is hilarious and fun part of big Saturday. Um, but all of these make your experience rich. And I think um, I really encourage you to get involved because you'll meet people that you may not have gotten to know. Um, my oldest friends as an alumni come from playing bar tag on the playground at Country Day. And I still keep up with many of them, but my current friends, my running crowd are folks really from this Country Day community that I have met stuffing envelopes or serving popcorn or decorating for a class party or um, helping me with the treasury books, who knows. <laughs> Those kinds of act events really connect you with people and um, I, I really urge you to get involved. Um, you can log on to BucksNet as Shannon keeps mentioning. Um, there is a sign up sheet. It's very easy to fill and check off anything you're interested in. Um, and we would love to plug you in or just introduce you further to all the unique things that we do. The primary mission of the Parents Association is to support our school in every endeavor, um, in every event, and to build a community and help us all grow and learn together. And I, I think in this time of uncertainty that communities like Country Day can really bolster us all up and motivate us to persevere and be strong as, um, as a, an, a huge family. So welcome and sign up. I've got email. My email is on the um, box net too. If you have any questions, love to connect. Ah, oh, oh, thank you, Nancy. Um, having you guys kind of create that community, especially during these times, is um, really important. So I'm actually going to. I see a couple questions coming in. So I'm going to bring um, Mr. Reed in to the stream um, to make sure. Here we go. All sure. right. Because I know, Nancy, we were going to kind of talk a little bit about ways that they can connect and kind of answer some of these questions. But, Mark, do you want to, um, I know you kind of saw just like how we're thinking about, especially for our youngest ones. And then Nancy yeah. can also kind of touch to some of the things that we're doing. Sounds sure, good. Sure. I'm happy to jump back on. Um, you're asking some great questions in the um in the uh, blog post, or um, again, tech is not the top of my, top of my skill <laughs> set, but at the in the uh, in the questions, and uh, one of them is really around masks and how do you and if you can keep masks on junior kindergartners and kindergartners, and that's a those are real. It's a really good question, and the answer is one that we don't know for sure. Number one, whether we'll be in masks or not, we we need to follow the. The guidelines that uh, the, C uh, the uh, CDC and our health professionals recommend, but two, if we were in them, uh, what would that look like? And and we don't have a full answer to what that's going to look like yet. I can tell you that I have two. I've had two opportunities, and I'm going on a third 
Um, next week, I will spend some time on the phone with an educator or an educational leader, actually a head of school in China that is uh, at, at an international school in China, talking about what the last four weeks have been like for them. They're now going into their, I guess by then it'll be their sixth week of online learning, there are of, uh, of learning with socially distanced students. They are um, six weeks in, as I said, and they are figuring it out and uh, trying to figure out how it's going to work and how they've managed it. And this is an international school. They have an added component of borders to it. So it's got a boarding component. But uh, my first conversations with them were a bit surprising to me. And it didn't surprise our early childhood educators, but it surprised me a bit because uh, I had the exact same question about masks. And, and their response was that uh, it took them about four days to help the students in the JK and K get it. And the head jokingly said, I think they do it better than our middle schoolers. Than our middle schoolers. <laughs> um, so right now we in our own minds can't see the youngest of our students really doing this. But uh, when I mentioned this to one of our early childhood educators who's been here a good long time, um, she said that doesn't surprise her. So I'm confident that we can do whatever we need to do to, um, to mitigate risk at the school. And at the same time, uh, we know that this, this is gonna be a challenge for all of us. Uh, and I know many of you have young children um, in 31 years, I can tell you upper schoolers may be just as challenging to keep socially distanced with masks on. So I don't know what that's going to look like. That's one particular scenario um, about uh, that you're that we're kind of talking about that involves math. I don't know where we'll be at that point. I know I continue to follow the guide of great health professionals and the CDC and our state and federal uh, guidelines. And so uh, a great question, but know that we are trying to plan for all of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mark, I also want to kind of share, we're super grateful to have your leadership during this time because your, your role as a chair of organizations like SIS um, really allows us to get the full um opportunity to learn and be around the smartest people and so that we are making sure that we're doing um you know putting the best thinking towards this so i did just want to mention kind of those leadership roles not only in um, academic realms like the southern association for independent schools which we're currently chair of but also other nonprofits like for being on the board of atrium and stuff so um i'm just grateful and i wanted to let our new newest families know that uh, that those um you know we are able to kind of glean from all of those kind of smarts of the people that are um that are thinking about this in the best way um, Nancy, I know you've been thinking a lot about this, especially yes. with our newest families. So I want to give you a chance to also kind of talk about this and then just about what are the next things that our families should be doing and how can they be staying connected during this summer time? Yeah, thank you, Shan. I think that um, I, I, I'm reading reading some of the little comments too in the questions, and I think those are, you know, as Mark said, those are the things that we're thinking about and we're planning from, you know, a to Z trying to figure it all out. But I think that what my office is hoping to do, you all, I, I hope, you know, that you've been getting because we've sent out lots of different emails and notifications about different ways to stay involved and so forth. And on April 16th, we sent out something about Bucks Now just to kind of get you started and understanding. We sent out athletic signups. I'm going to mention a few of these so that if you didn't get anything or if you don't remember getting anything or if you're like me you're getting so much that you can't go back and find it right now that's fine too because we we can send it to you again but we sent um athletic signups um in may you all came to, many of you came to campus which was really fun for us to pick up the um your sign to put in the yard um and it's been fun seeing those out and about um and so and then we we're going to be doing, and this gets at I think some of the questions that you're asking about. Just what are some things this summer that are going to happen that will keep your children connected, or, or get your children connected to other children, um, and 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 you as parents. Um, one of the things Mark alluded to was the 
we call the Parent Connection Program. And that is, it's kind of like a buddy for a family. It's not a student buddy, it's a parent to parent buddy. And most of you, you should have heard from your buddy family already. Sometimes it's a matter of the communication just doesn't happen like we hope it will. And it could be that. So if you don't, I would say by the end of this week, early next week, if you have not heard from a country day family who is saying to you, I am your parent connection, I am your buddy family, please reach out to us in missions and let us know that because we want to we want to be sure that that is going. That's just a family who will say, you know, I might have a child about your child's age. I've been at Country Day. I know this. Is, these are some things you're wondering about. Um, they won't know any more answers about the pandemic necessarily, but they will be able to help you with divisional kinds of questions that you may have. Um, some things that we're doing, we're connecting students. Upper school students have been taking placement tests, as have middle school students. You should be in touch with some middle school and upper school um uh, faculty members who will be helping you with upper school students with their schedules, middle school students with their schedules. We've got some Zooms scheduled right now for rising first through eighth graders. We're doing Zooms by grade level where you can meet the guidance counselor and meet the other children in those grades. Those are happening this week and into next week. Those are some little ways to connect. Um, and I think that um, a, another one that is get, is being in, in the works, because this to me is gets at one of the questions I'm not not sure whether it was Katie Grinelli or who asked it, but um, was asking about, you know, how are our children, if, if they're in masks and you come to school and you don't know this teacher, one of the things we're going to try to do is we're putting together a website for new families, particularly lower school, where we're going to have some activities for children. We're going to have them be able to meet the PE teacher, meet the art teacher, see their face so that when they get to school, if we are in masks, it will still be a familiar voice. It will be some eyes that you recognize. It will be somebody who is not completely new to you. So we're doing some things like that. You'll get updates from us about that. Um, it probably will go out mid mid June, I think. And it'll have fun activities for your little ones to do. You might have an art project. I know that there it's going to be a long summer for a lot of us. So, um, so th those are some things. Um, one of the things that everybody keeps talking about is Buck's Net. You should have gotten an email from us uh, at the beginning of this week that told you how to log into BucksNet and that will be your access to the world of Country Day. Mm -hmm. So if for some reason you did not or you can't find it or you don't remember, mm -hmm. call, email me, email Cheryl, Molly, Jabari, Robin, any of us, and we will get it to you um, because that is kind of your gateway. There will be help forms. All those kinds of things are going to be happening. Absolutely. Thanks, Nancy. Sure. I'm actually going to bring um, Scott back in and I'm going to give Nancy Saz opportunity to say bye. Thank bye. you Nancy, so much for being here Thank and you. for kind of connecting with our new families. Um, so a you know, reminder for our new families, check out BucksNet. Again, we're going to remind you that the Parent Association page and Nancy's contact information is right on there. Um, never feel bad to reach out. We're all here for you. So thanks, Nancy, for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Hi, Scott. Welcome back. <laughs> I just wanted to also kind of bring you back and say thank you. I, we kind of, I try to be mindful of time. We try to stay within 45 minutes, which were just past. But I think there are some really good questions and um, wanted to thank you for the time and give you guys any um opportunity to kind of share anything that you feel wasn't shared or some families uh, opportunity to have any last minute questions. You know, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to start by just saying thank you for logging on and, and just being a part of us already. And, and more than anything, I hope you'll think about this. And I said this in some of the smaller sessions uh, when your children were being tested. You know, I hope you'll think about this as a 13 or 14 year journey if your child is JK or K. And if you're coming in in middle or ninth grade, I hope you'll think about this as a long term relationship because it doesn't just end when your child graduates. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I received an email yesterday from someone who graduated in 1965, who was interested in having a cup of coffee to learn more about the school based on an email that they received. 
um, these relationships last a lifetime and you are building something for your child for your child that they will never uh, that they will never forget and can never be replaced um, the relationships they build with faculty the relationships that they build with their peers will carry on for many many years and i'm seeing that come alive and well in these 11 years that i've served the school um, so welcome welcome aboard is what i would say you're 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 great partners and we're looking for strong partnerships. Oh, thank you, Mark. Thank you. And again, thank you, Nancy and thank Scott. You. Uh, thank you. thank you all for joining. As we shared, this is one of a series of our Leadership Live. You guys are on YouTube right now, so you can kind of see the full series kind of go back. We've really tried to touch on some topics that families have asked on. And it's an example of if you guys have a question um, throughout the either right now or throughout, and um, we want to hear from you and we will meet that need through either new ways like this live stream or within a conference room or a one-on-one -on -one phone call. So thank you so much. Stay up to date, connect with us on social and Bucksnet, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks all. Thanks yeah, everybody. Thank Thanks. Stay in touch. Thank <laughs> Bye.